Welcome to Hindu Analysis, August 4, 2018. So today we are going to see all these articles. So the first article is WHO thumbs up for Swachh Bharat's rural component. So recently World Health Organization gave a report which appreciates the initiative of Swachh Bharat mission of a country. So by means of successfully constructing lot of toilets as well as better solid waste management our country achieves a lot in sanitation perspective. So if you see here then Swachh Bharat mission it has two main components one is rural component another one is urban component rural is uh, Swachh Bharat mission I mean so in this as of now our India achieved a rural sanitation coverage of 89.07 percentage as of now so by means of uh, doing this sanitation coverage 421 districts as well as 4.9 lakh villages are declared as ODF which means open defecation free so before this SBM mission because of open defecation lot of people are getting affected by means of this diarrhea and protein energy malnutrition but now as all the villages are turned to be an open defecation free it prevented or, or it helps in preventing more than 3 lakh deaths which has occurred due to this diarrhea and protein energy malnutrition every year so it is a major move or it is a good move that is what the world health report uh, world health organizations report suggest and also because of this sbm nearly 4 14 million DALYs could be avoided. In the sense, DALY means disability adjusted life years, which is equal to YLL plus YLD. So, years of life lost due to death and years of life lost due to disability. By means of adding this, we get this disability adjusted life years. So, this is uh, this DALI index represents the number of years lost or number of productive years lost due to the disability or the premature death of the individuals in the country. So now by means of this SBM mission, this DALI which is nearly 14 million disability adjusted life years could be avoided which in turn indicates that the number of premature death or number of the disability years are avoided by means of this SBM mission. This is what the World Health Report recently suggests about the SBM Grameen mission. The second article is K.M. Joseph gets not for Supreme Court. So recently the center has accepted the Supreme Court's recommendation to induct K.M. Joseph into the Supreme Court. So what the news is a five member collegium has given its recommendation for the induction of Uttarakhand High Court Chief Justice K.M. Joseph into the Supreme Court. But the law ministry has sent back the recommendation for reconsideration that is this five member collegium reiterated that it want to induct this came Joseph into the Supreme Court but yesterday the government has accepted the induction of KM Joseph into the Supreme Court so if along with two other judges so if these three people were inducted if these three judges are inducted into the Supreme Court then the strength of the Supreme Court is to become 25 in previous discussions we saw like the center did not accept the recommendations of the induction of KM Joseph into the Supreme Court stating certain reasons so what are the reasons which was put forward by the center for not accepting this induction if we see means these are the reasons that is the first one is it is implicit that means April 2016 judgment by KM Joseph so if we see in this April 2016 judgment what the news is the government was trying to impose a president rule in the Uttarakhand stating that uh, there are some defection allegations on the members of the state legislative assemblies so here what the matter is he that is this KM Joseph is one of the member who was on the bench while hearing this Uttarakhand's president rule case and he actually didn't allow the president rule in Uttarakhand or he quashed the president rule in Uttarakhand case so this uh, is suspected to be one of the reason why the center doesn't want KM Joseph to be inducted into the supreme court and also the center stated certain other reasons also one is the lack of seniority of uh, K.M. Joseph when compared to other judges in the high court and it is not fair or justified to other more senior or suitable or deserving chief justices of other high court if we induct him into the supreme court and uh, if you uh, see in terms of number of judges in the supreme court then the Kerala high court has adequate representation in the higher judiciary which is the supreme court so if we induct him again then it uh, creates some kind of regional imbalances in the representation of the every state in the judicial system so this is what what the reason stated by the center for not accepting the recommendation of the Supreme Court to induct KM Joseph but now they accepted the recommendation so the way forward here is 
to resolve the conflict between the center and the judicial system what we need is a fresh memorandum of procedures for the appointments of the judges into the supreme court as well as in the high court and that method or the procedural method of appointment should be in a transparent way so this is the way forward so the third article is checking the new abnormal so here the new abnormal in the sense it refers to the mob violence or the mob lynchings which has taken place all over the country which affects the moral fabric of our society. So recently Supreme Court has given some preventive guidelines in order to tackle this mob lynching which has taken place. So in those uh, preventive guidelines these are the points which are mentioned. So first what the Supreme Court mentioned is it is the responsibility of each and every state to prevent or to curb the mob violence which has taken place each and every state should be proactive in curbing this and uh, there are a lot of youths who are unemployed in our country who are following this fundamentalist right-wing groups ideology so we should also take some proactive steps to given them adequate opportunities in terms of education employment etc in order to curb this issue so it is also the state's responsibility this is what the supreme court states in that preventive guidelines and so it is uh, the supreme court also warned about the consequences of if any group is taking the law into its own hand then it led to obviously led to the anarchy chaos and the disorder in the society which obviously led to a society which is very violent in nature so under this preventive guidelines what they are supposed to do is in each and every state they are going to appoint some senior police officer who is going to act as a nodal officer and he is having the rank which is equivalent to the superintendent of police this nodal officer has some task force to ensure the investigation of this mob lynching and he should take some proactive measures in order to uh, stop this proliferation of fake messages or provocative messages whatever spreading in the social media and he should also ensure that the victims of these mob lynching or the mob violence should get the adequate compensation so this is what this nodal officer is supposed to do under this preventive guidelines and also the in that uh, guideline they uh, stated that the center and the state should give some public notifications in radio television and social media about these kind of fake messages and also about the mob lynching whatever happening so if at all any incidents of mob lynching or mob violence is taking place in a locality then the local nodal officer or the jurisdiction police officer should come there and lodge a first information report which is the FIR first and uh, also ensures the adequate investigation for the victims as well as the fast track court should also be there in order to provide the justice for the victims who are getting affected by mob lynching within six months so this is what this preventive guidelines is supposed to aim at so for this mob lynching actually they are comparing our Indian scenario with the US scenario which was taken place during the 1800s and 1900s. So during that point of time uh, that is this during 1800 to 1900 the US was uh, having the mob lynching at its peak it was maximum during that time and it was uh, like taking 100 years for them to resolve the mob lynching which was prevailing in their society. But if we compare it in India India is not like that we have not that much time so we have to take some proactive measures to curb that as soon as possible Be uh, in US nearly 200 anti lynching bills were passed during that time in order to curb this mob lynching but none of those bills were getting uh, implemented successfully but recently in 2005 the US apologized for not pausing this anti lynching bill which was actually needed at that point of time so we have to take that as a reference and uh, we have to make sure that anti lynching bills or have to be passed as soon as possible in our uh, parliament so India has no luxury of time also there are a lot of young people in our country who are not having sufficient employment so uh, in order to curb that also we need uh, this anti lynching bill to get implemented as soon as possible so what the solution here they stating is the executives must immediately uh, implement the directions whichever is provided by the judiciary that is the supreme court so the supreme court is now providing this preventive guidelines right so the executive has to make sure that whatever mentioned in that guidelines they are going to adhere to that and implement that in order to curb this mob violence which is prevailing in the society the next article is center pushes 
for quota in promotion of SESTs in the government jobs or in the public employment. So this is what the article. So here the center to Supreme Court recently asked for accelerated promotion with consequential seniority. So what this means is speedy promotion for the SCST people in the public employment with consequential seniority. What this consequential seniority means, let us consider two persons A and B and they are working in the same level in a public employment or in a government company. So now A is from general category and B is from SE or SC category. Okay. So even though A is senior to B because of this quota in promotion for SC and ST people now B gets promoted first than A even though A is senior so this is what this consequential seniority there is one more thing called a catch-up rule which is opposite to this consequential seniority so what that catch-up rule in the sense what despite of what their caste is despite that whether they are SC, ST or general category whoever have the more experience so they are first getting promoted that is what this catch-up rule means so if you see the background, there is a famous case which is Naharaj Judgment 2006. So according to that judgment, what the Supreme Court gave is a particular Dalit community or SESC community is uh, having the opportunity to get quota in the promotion of public employment only if the community is backward, which means socially and educationally if the community is backward and that particular community is inadequately represented as well as such a reservation of SAST people in the public employment or in promotion would not affect the overall efficiency of the public administration which means only the um, effective employee should get promoted first based on their experience if at all this ensures the inefficiency of the public administration then it should not allow this promotion quota so that is what the Naharajan judgment stated and also the Supreme Court wanted that it require quantifiable data from the government if at all the government is going to implement this quota in the promotion of SCST in the public employment. So what the Attorney General recently stated is based on the conditions of Nahara judgment 2006 that is inadequately represented, backwardness, everything. So it is impossible situation to implement this quota for promotion of the SCST people because that is very complex scenario, right? So that is not at all going to happen so this is what he told and also these Dalit community faced centuries of deprivation in the society they are undergoing a lot of discriminations in the society so and he also objected the creamy layer concept in the SCST reservation stating that all SCST people should be treated equally and he also added that there is a need of 22.5 percent of the post reservation for promotion of the SCST people in the public employment 15 percent for SC and 7.5 percent for ST so um, recently in November 2017, the two judge Supreme Court bench also wanted to revisit this creamy layer and quota concept of the SCST people in the uh, reservation of the uh, employment in the government sectors. So as per our constitution, Article 16, 4, 4A and 4B are provided the rights for the state to make the provisions for quota in promotion of the SCST people in the government jobs. And also the state have the power for providing the appointments of any backward class of citizens in the government jobs. By making use of these constitutional provisions, now the center is trying to implement this quota in the promotion of the SEST people. So what is the way forward here is justice to the backward community and equity for the forward community as well as efficiency for the entire system is what needed in our current scenario. So the next article is after NIFA, case of West Nile virus is suspected in the Kolikot, Kerala. So uh, this West Nile fever is a viral infection which is typically spread through the mosquitoes. How means if you see here, so the mosquitoes becoming infected when they feed on this infected birds and this mosquito when by the human beings, they are getting affected by means of this West Nile fever. So it is asymptomatic which means it has no symptoms and it has as of now it has no vaccines, no medicines and it is not spread through the human contact, it is only spread through the mosquitoes. So what it could lead to is if at all a person is getting affected by this West Nile fever, it affects the central nervous system of the person. So the next article is Parliament Enhancement of Productivity Bill 2017. In the recent time, there are a lot of disturbances and disruptions taking place in the Parliament, which affects the normal functioning of the Parliament, which led to the ineffective functioning of the Parliament. So as a remedy to solve this issue, now 
uh, they are putting forward this parliamentary enhancement of productivity bill 2017 in the parliament so according to that bill there are certain uh, provisions which are proposed one is extending the house sittings to 120 days a year so under this enhancement of productivity bill they stated some provisions which need to be implemented in the parliament so first one is extend house sittings to 120 days a year so before uh, as of now the parliament is uh, having a sitting of only 70 days a year so now they want to extend it to 120 days so the members who are actually disrupting the normal functioning of the parliament so that members salary and allowances should also be deducted this is what proposed in this enhancement productivity bill and also they want to advance the working hour by uh, from 11 a.m to 10 a.m and the laws of working hours should be compensated by means of including more number of hours in the parliament or by including more number of days for the working of the parliament so due to a lot of adjournments and the disruptions there might be a loss of working hours of the parliament so it should be compensated and also there should be a special session of 15 days should be there in order to provide that all the parties in the parliament should discuss the most important national issues so as a whole this provisions of the enhancement productivity bill is looking as a, a good step in order to increase the efficiency of the parliament functioning in the current scenario thank you